Right now, here at KSAT, we are going over nearly two hours of body cam footage that SAPD released of a black jogger being wrongfully arrested. We have the latest in just a few moments. San Antonio found remains during an archaeological dig, temporarily halting a project downtown. And this morning, descendants were able to hold a spiritual ceremony for their ancestors. Of course, today is very hot. Heat index values in the afternoon could be up to 110 degrees, but we're watching some rain up near the Dallas-Fort Worth area, hopefully going to bring us a shot at some storms late this evening. I've got a look ahead coming up. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. Damian Daniels was a military veteran shot and killed by a Bear County Sheriff's deputy just a week ago. Now his family gathering outside the Justice Center. Daniels family meeting with the District Attorney Joe Gonzalez as questions remain about why Daniels was killed during a mental health check outside of his far west side home. Dylan Collier live in downtown with what we have learned about this meeting. Dylan. And Ursula, flanked by prominent civil rights attorney Lee Merritt, the family of Damian Daniels walked into the Justice Center just after 10 a.m. The meeting appeared to last about 90 minutes. The shooting death of the 31-year-old Daniels has reignited calls to change how the sheriff's office and law enforcement in Bear County in general handle mental health calls. Daniels, who was armed and going through a mental health episode, was shot and killed by a deputy after struggling with several deputies outside his home. We learned today his family first called the American Red Cross because of this very concern that a response by law enforcement was not the right way to handle it. The family also claiming Daniels was not suicidal and that this was his first mental health episode. Merritt says the family takes issue with the sheriff's assertion that the deputies responded appropriately. Merritt also confirming that BCSO officials reached out to the Daniels family after Daniels was killed and the family declined to meet with them. Merritt has also asked for the name of the deputy who shot and killed Daniels to be released along with the full body camera footage. Live outside the Bear County Justice Center, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Dylan. Speaking of body cam footage, just into our KSAT newsroom, the San Antonio Police Department releasing body cam footage of the moments leading up to a black jogger being wrongfully identified and then arrested. We first reported about the incident with Matthias Ometu, who SAPD says was arrested on August 27th in connection to a family violence call. However, SAPD said that Ometu was not the suspect they were looking for. He is now facing felony assault of officers charged for kicking an officer while they put him in the back of the police vehicle after he failed to identify himself. In a statement released with this body cam video, Chief McManus says that the officers acted appropriately and within their legal authority. McManus added they are working with the DA to, quote, facilitate possible dialogue with Mr. Metu so that we can share perspectives of what occurred and hopefully bridge the trust and communication gaps that clearly exist, end quote. KSAT currently reviewing nearly two hours of that body cam footage. We're going to keep you updated on KSAT.com and on the news at five. Human remains found during an archaeological investigation earlier this summer at Milam Park in downtown. The investigation initiated because the city was about to start construction on Santa Rosa Street. This morning, groups believed to be descendants from the bodies found gathered at the park for a ceremony before the remains were exhumed. Sarah Costa was there, brings us the latest. Diana, De La Garza, Gonzalez. Those are some of the last names of the men and women who traveled to San Antonio in 1718 from Spain and the Canary Islands with hopes and dreams to establish a new home. Today, the names read out loud by their descendants to honor their lives and memory. This after human remains were found near Milam Park in downtown near Santa Rosa and Houston streets during an archaeological investigation before the start of the city street construction project. Groups believed to be their descendants, like the San Antonio 1718 founding families and descendants and Canary Islands Descendants Association, gathered this morning for a small dedication before those remains were exhumed by city crews. Yes, it was emotional for us because we have no place to honor some of our our loved ones back in that time of history 300 years ago. City archaeologists say that there are historical records that there were three former cemeteries in that vicinity of downtown, which is what prompted the investigation before construction. Where the remains were found, the city says there used to be a city cemetery established around 1808 
and then stopped being used 50 years later. Sandra Cruz Cuella, whose fifth great grandfather was buried in one of those former cemeteries, says she is grateful for the opportunity to honor the remains found. The link is San Antonio is becoming more of a modern city, and uh, we want to see that go forward. You know, but we do want to honor the remains that are here. The remains will not be reburied until all surrounding construction projects are completed, estimated to be around the summer of 2023. The city says it will work with the descendant groups to decide the best way to rebury them. From downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Six months since the first case was documented in this country, the U.S. has now surpassed six million cases of COVID-19. Meanwhile, concerns still growing around the country about children possibly going back to the classrooms. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. A new month unveiling a bleak milestone in the fight against COVID-19. Six months after the first confirmed case in the United States, six million people have caught the virus. August now stands as the nation's third deadliest COVID-19 month on record. The virus killing at least 30,000 just last month. Overall, nearly 184,000 American lives lost. The numbers that you've been hearing, the 180,000 plus deaths, are real deaths. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the nation's top infectious diseases doctor, on Good Morning America addressing this misleading retweet by President Donald Trump, claiming COVID-19 has only killed 9,000 people. After the CDC said 94% of those who died from the virus had underlying health issues. Twitter later removing the post for violating its policy. The point that the CDC was trying to make was that a certain percentage of them had nothing else but just COVID. That does not mean that someone who has hypertension or diabetes who dies of COVID didn't die of COVID-19. They did. New cases of the virus have slowed in some parts of the country, but as students head back to school, some into the classroom, the number of states seeing increasing deaths and hospitalizations continue to rise. The latest data also showing COVID-19 rates this summer among children increased faster than they did for the general public. Though experts caution, they don't know why. However, the struggle for how to safely open in-person learning for lower and higher education continues, not just for students, but also for instructors. Parents have the right to know what kind of environment they're sending their students into. Employees have the right to know what kind of working conditions they're going into. In New York City, one of the largest teachers union in the country forcing the mayor to push back in-person learning until September 21st. And it's the first of the month, rent and mortgage payments are due. Eviction protections for millions of Americans who lost their jobs due to the pandemic have expired. We're expecting protests across the country today to demand Congress take action. Faith Abube, ABC News, Washington. There's a critical blood shortage in South Texas, but you can help replenish the bank. We're gonna tell you about the blood drive happening at Northside ISD this week. And the NFL just nine days away. So how are the Cowboys, how are the Texans looking? The new Cowboys head coach not giving away any secrets. We're going to give you an inside look at some of his covert strategies. The importance of voting, very clear this year. But for some in Texas, voting has not always been easy. We'll tell you how. Records are expected to be broken this election season, and as more people head out to vote, that's a good thing. But healthy and safe access to the polls is something some people worry about. RJ Marquez spoke with a professor at Trinity University about the history of voter rights right here in Texas. Texas traditionally has had some of the strictest laws for voting rights and access in the country. Dr. Kerry Lattimore, an associate professor of history at Trinity University, traces many of these issues to the end of the Civil War. When you look at Texas kind of as a whole, it has a lot of similarities in regards to minority rights, minority voting rights, as you would see in the South. Even though the 15th Amendment in 1870 granted African-American men the right to vote, Lattimore said many Southern legislators still found loopholes. You can't theoretically take away a person's right to vote, but you can create barriers towards their right to vote. And so things like poll taxes, grandfather clauses, literacy tests, 
all of those things in Southern states are created. With the Voting Rights Act of 1965, state and local governments were no longer allowed to impose new voting laws or language that discriminated against minority groups. One key part of the act was preclearance, which meant that certain states like Texas had to get the government's permission before making any changes to their voting laws. But in 2013, the Supreme Court weakened preclearance protections, and that led to some of the voting laws we see now. Texas's voter ID law is considered to be one of the strictest in the country. The back and forth in the courts has led to confusion at the polls, especially for Hispanic communities. The use of fear and the, the discussions about illegality um, may lead people who may not be exactly sure um, whether they should are allowed to vote or not. The mail-in ballot debate continues in the courts and there is no online or same-day voter registration. Texas has also removed hundreds of polling sites over the years, many in poor or minority neighborhoods. These are things that seem to be more of a roadblock than something that's intended to enhance access. If we say that elections matter, then we should have more polls than less. Lattimore says registering voters is also a key issue. Texas makes very hard to do is to be, to become a volunteer deputy registrar, you have to go through a large process and you have to go through a process in every county. In Bexar County, there are now more than a million registered voters. Lattimore said despite these restrictions, it's important for people to learn about how to register and vote with as much knowledge as possible. That's when you become true citizens and active in the process is when you know what you're doing, who you're voting for, and why. Don't take your vote for granted. Um, so many people, people have died for that privilege. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. Live look outside with live camp. Oh, it's murky out there. I walked yeah. outside this morning and I felt like someone had slapped me in the face with a wet blanket. Oh it was so yeah. humid. The humidity is so high, but we caught a little bit of a break here because morning clouds have been a bit stubborn and we've even seen some areas of sprinkles or else we'd be seeing temperatures probably in the 90s already. But currently it's 85 degrees in San Antonio. The aquifer is actually down almost a foot over the past 24 hours. Thankfully, everything in the pollen count looks good except mold, even though it's low now, I suspect it'll be climbing a little bit because of rain chances in the forecast. Speaking of rain, there are some of those sprinkles on the radar. You can see Canyon Lake getting a light rain shower, uh, rain showers in Gonzales and Lavaca counties as well. But we have much better rain chances late tonight and even for the rest of the week. So I've got a look ahead coming up. Welcome back. A lot of people in South Texas relying on the blood bank to survive in the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center still in desperate need of donations. The center says we have only a little more than two and a half days supply for most blood types. It's even less for life saving O positive and O negative blood types. That's why the center is partnering with NISD. They're holding a number of blood drives. You can register to donate blood at Taft High School today. If you're interested in giving blood, head to SouthTexasBlood.com. All right, well, it reads 85 degrees on the screen, but I feel like it's a lot warmer than that. I, I feel your feeling. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling it too. Same. My hair is in particular. Same, Ursula stepped outside briefly for my lunch break. The hair just poof, goes down. The high humidity is out there, but hey, guess what? Some good news. It's September. September is a month that we look forward to, not only because on average, we see a little bit more than three inches of rainfall, but also temperatures take a gradual tumble. Uh, the average high temperature on September 1st today is 94 degrees. We're going to be warmer than that probably today here, but then by the end of the month, our average high is 86 and you also really feel it in the morning. We usually have high humidity to start off September uh, mornings in the low 70s, but by the end of the month, our morning lows are typically comfy in the mid 60s, so we have that to look forward to. One of the reasons why that happens is uh, we often see our first average cool front by the end of September, and there are some hints that maybe we could even see a cool front as early as next week, but that's a while away. Let's start with the most immediate forecast, the heat and the mugginess today. Outside right now, it's 85 degrees, but let me tell you, these clouds that have stuck around and even produced some light rain showers in some areas have really been our saving grace. Look at what it feels like outside. 
97 degrees. Can you imagine what it would feel like if we had a little bit more sunshine and our thermometer was into the 90s? We'd be feeling like we were already in the triple digits by now, and we will into the afternoon because we're already starting to see some sunshine. Uh, south winds at about eight miles per hour at the airport officially. So taking a look at the radar, you can see where some of the light rain and sprinkles are right now. Some light rain in Lavaca County just to the northwest of Hallettsville and to the east of Gonzales. Then near Canyon Lake, a quick splash and dash shower there. And I wouldn't be surprised if you got some sprinkles, especially if you live on the northern side of Bear County earlier today. Like I said, this has uh, kept the clouds around a bit, but you can already see that there are starting to be some holes in these, this cloud cover. We'll be looking at mostly cloudy skies into the afternoon, and our temperatures are going to start to rise uh, even more than they already have. It's already 90 degrees in New Braunfels, 90 in Gonzales, 91 in Pleasanton, but in the low 80s up in the hill country, 91 in Del Rio, where they're looking at a lot of sunshine right now. But this is what I'm really concerned about. The heat index value is going to be very high today, anywhere from 105 to 110 degrees, even with the cloudy start today. So because of that, there is a uh, CPS peak energy uh, day, but we'll talk about that in just a bit. First, I want to tell you the rest of the forecast. Sprinkles in two at two, probably around in some places, 90 degrees, 98 by 5 p.m. with that heat index of 105 to 108. Then tonight, we've actually got the chance for some storms. By midnight, the chance for storms around San Antonio and especially to the north will be about 60 percent. For the rest of the day, though, breezy winds up to 15 miles per hour. So like I was saying, today is a CPS energy peak energy demand day. You're going to want to reduce your use between 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. That's when it'll be the hottest and when the power grid will be stressed. And so you can save yourself some money and help save our power grid a little bit. So talking about the rain chance for tonight, that's the next big thing that I want to focus on. Look up toward Dallas Fort Worth. You can see how there are some storms up there. These are going to continue to push to the east and to the south. The outflow boundary or the rain cooled air is going to fire off some more storms across parts of central Texas, eventually making it to the hill country by the late evening hours. So we're talking 10 to midnight. That's when we'll see some scattered showers and storms on the radar, especially up in the hill country and north toward Austin. Lightning and gusty winds will be possible, so we'll be keeping an eye on that. The key word for rain tonight is scattered. Unfortunately, some people will still miss out on the rainfall, but it's looking good for, for a, a good majority of us to see some rain tonight into the early morning hours of Wednesday. So tomorrow we'll have lingering rain in the morning and lingering clouds. So our afternoon highs will likely be a little cooler too. Now, when I say cooler, I mean temperatures will probably be in the low to mid nineties instead of close to 100 degrees. And then once again, by Wednesday night into Thursday morning, we'll have another shot at some scattered showers and storms. Speaking of, we have a chance for rain just about every day on this seven day forecast. Now the rain will be more pop up on Thursday, Friday and Saturday, but it's still going to be there. We'll probably see rain on the radar around San Antonio every day through the weekend because of this messy weather pattern. I would highly encourage you to have your KSAT weather app handy because we'll be updating the forecast because again, this kind of forecast calls for changes just about every day. Well, this is when you start earning your money, Sarah, after <laughs> just calling for hot, hot, hot. <laughs> All right, thank you, Sarah. Time to talk football. Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy, not a fan of fake crowd noise, and he didn't hold back on his opinions. Plus, we are talking college football. Fans of the Aggies not going to be seeing the marching band on the field this year. We're going to have the details just ahead. All right, we are just over a week until the kickoff of the NFL season. The Cowboys have a top-tier team, well, on paper at least. So how's training camp looking? Little update, it is no longer called the blue and white scrimmage. Now it's Cowboys night at AT&T Stadium, and it's included some strict restrictions on what the Cowboys' own broadcast can actually show. We're not going to be able to see any formations on TV, no numbers, and no names on the jerseys. This is all an effort to prevent teams, other teams, from scouting the Cowboys before the regular season kicks off. And remember, there are no preseason games this year. Also, part of the Cowboys' only appearance in AT&T Stadium before the regular season was the league-mandated fake fan noise that a lot of people are passionate about in the stadium. Mike McCarthy, not one of those people. It's uh, league-mandated. Uh, you know, they're trying to pull, pull, you know, 
all the football ops criteria together for for the regular season games. I was kind of waiting to, to see exactly how loud it was going to be. And I'm not a big fan of fake crowd noise, but uh, it, it's it's you know, there's a reason for it and uh, we'll be fine. The Cowboys have every intention of having fans on the sidelines after the governor has allowed 50% capacity. And talking Texans, new reports showing the Texans have solidified their defensive front. The Houston Texans extending inside linebacker Zach Cunningham Four-year contract, $58 million. That averages out to about $14.5 million a season. Cunningham set to become the free agent at the end of this 2020, but not anymore. He is locked in through 2024. And now, thanks to his new contract, third highest paid inside linebacker in the entire league. It definitely meant a lot to me. Just when they uh, got worried back that we finally got the deal done, I was just very excited. Uh, a lot of, you know, it's just... <laughs> Having to take it all in was that was uh, crazy enough for me. And then when I was able to call my family and you know give them the news, that was definitely a, a big moment for me. All right, so he's recorded 339 tackles, three and a half sacks, and three fumble recoveries in his three seasons with the Texans. They picked him in the second round of the 2017 NFL Draft. All right, time to talk college football. The Aggies, not great news. SEC announced new game day rules during this pandemic. On-field band performances not allowed during the pregame or the halftime. No more shows like that. It is a big blow to Texas A&M fans who have come to love the band's intricate performances at all the home games. There will also be no on-field recognition of athletes or donors during the games. The SEC says the rules could change during the season if this pandemic gets a little bit better. San Antonio native Kellen Mond starting his senior season, also recognizing this is his last chance to win an SEC championship and last chance to play for a national title. He is, however, expected to break a number of the A&M passing records. Where I'm at mentally, uh, I, I don't think I've been the, at this mind state in a really long time, so I feel really good, and I think this team um, is kind of feeding off uh, my mentality right now, and I think we're in a really good state, so I'm um, just trying to stay positive, uh, you know, when we go out and practice and, you know, when we're off the field, I'm trying to stay away from distractions that we have in College Station, and um, we're just trying to grow and get better each and every day. And don't forget the Aggies opening at home against Vanderbilt September 26th. Here's the thing, though. They do have to face Alabama in week two. And Kellen Mond, actually, recently, it's never too early to look at mock drafts. He is ranked in a couple mock drafts as the fourth best college quarterback right now. Wow. Yeah, so they're bright future. This season's going to be interesting, no matter how you slice to it. To say the least, Ursula. And I'm no for crowd noise. fake crowd noise. I see that. Very passionate about it. Yes. I'm indifferent. I just want to see football. Keep it real, people. <laughs> President Donald Trump expected to visit Kenosha, Wisconsin today, despite the mayor and governor there asking him not to. We're going to hear more about the president's plan to visit the city. President Donald Trump heading to Kenosha, Wisconsin, in the wake of the police shooting of Jacob Blake. But the mayor and the governor of Wisconsin have asked him to stay away amid the violent protests there. President Trump says he believes he is helping. Meanwhile, Joe Biden calling the president a toxic presence who encourages violence. ABC's Alex Perche has the story. President Trump taking off for Kenosha, Wisconsin today, ignoring requests to stay away from the governor and this plea from the town's mayor. We always have room for presidents to come to visit. Uh, the timing on this, we felt, was not good. The president is planning to survey damage from recent unrest following the shooting of Jacob Blake, a black man who was shot seven times in the back and left paralyzed by a white police officer. Trump will also meet with law enforcement, claiming his visit could actually help. Today I'm there for law enforcement and for the National Guard because they've done a great job in Kenosha. The president won't be meeting with Blake's family, the White House saying they were opposed to the family's lawyer listening in on the call. The family may also visit the shooting scene today. 
Meanwhile, President Trump defending Kyle Rittenhouse, the 17-year-old charged with shooting three people, two of whom died during protests last week in Kenosha. He probably would have been killed, but it's under, it's under investigation. Fires are burning and we have a president who fans the flames. Democratic nominee Joe Biden in Pittsburgh yesterday condemning violence at the protests, no matter who was conducting it, saying this is all happening under President Trump's watch. Biden criticizing the president for not condemning the alleged actions of Kyle Rittenhouse or Trump supporters in Portland, Oregon. Over the weekend, fights breaking out there when a Trump caravan drove through the city, clashing with protesters demanding racial justice. Witnesses reporting seeing trucks firing paintball guns at protesters. And later in the evening, this deadly shooting. Police saying 39-year-old Aaron Danielson died while wearing a Blue Lives Matter flag and reportedly a hat belonging to a right-wing group. Joe Biden in a statement saying Donald Trump's incomprehensible case for doing even more damage in a second term makes less and less sense every single day. President Trump condemned that Portland shooting, but when asked about his supporters firing paintballs at protesters, he said paint is a defense mechanism. It's not bullets. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Lebanon's parliament designating a new prime minister nearly a month after the deadly explosion in Beirut. After months of protesting over corruption and a tanking economy, the explosion was the final straw for much of the public. Thousands demanded the government resign, and it did. French President Emmanuel Macron will be in Lebanon today to see the new prime minister and to commemorate one month since that tragedy. Today also marks 100 years since France helped establish the current government of Lebanon. Now Macron is calling on the international community to step in or risk another civil war there. The man who saved hundreds of Rwandans during the 1994 genocide is now under arrest on terrorism charges. Paul Rusa Sabagina sheltered Rwandans in the hotel that he managed. He inspired the movie Hotel Rwanda. He is an outspoken critic of the president of the Rwandan government. He was arrested in Dubai just yesterday. Some human rights activists say they are not worried because it is the latest example of the Rwandan government targeting critics outside of their own borders. The French weekly satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo is republishing controversial cartoons depicting the prophet Mohammed ahead of a terrorism trial. The cartoons originally published by a Danish newspaper in 2005 were republished in 2006. The images lead, led rather to an attack on the magazine's building five years ago. Twelve people were killed back then in 2025 when terrorists went on a shooting rampage during the staff's morning editorial meeting. Tomorrow, 14 suspects will face trial in Paris's criminal court over their alleged involvement in that attack. In all, 17 people were killed. And a petition on change.org getting a lot of traffic, replacing a Confederate statue with one of Chadwick Bozeman. The current statue is in the late actor's hometown of Anderson, South Carolina. There was already a move to replace the Confederate statue, but the sudden death of the hometown hero increasing that momentum. South Carolina law currently prohibits Confederate monuments to be removed under the Heritage Act. This new petition asked for this law to be changed. So far, there are more than 24,000 signatures. Looking outside with live cam, Ew. we are... Doesn't even look good out there. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I'm just thinking, is the sun even out? You can't tell from this There picture. are peaks of sunshine around there after a morning with stubborn cloud cover. We even had some very light rain showers in some places around the Alamo City, but we are starting to see the sun come out. I want to show you the radar right now to show you where those light showers are. They're mainly to the east of San Antonio. Out near Hallettsville, we've got some light rain showers out near Canyon Lake as well in the San Marcos area. But like I said, here in San Antonio, our light rain showers have generally come to an end and it is uh, we're starting to see the sun shine through. Uh, you can see those holes in the cloud cover there as the darker shades uh, and it's already warm. It's 85 degrees. It could be a lot worse if we didn't have that cloud cover from the morning, but we're going to continue to see these temperatures rise even more by the afternoon. We'll be at 98 degrees with a heat index value of 105 to 108. Now notice on the forecast too, as we head into the late evening, hours, there is a decent chance for some thunderstorms. I'll be back to detail a timeline of those thunderstorms and uh, talk about the areas that are more likely to get rain. Ursula. Thank you, Sarah. More tributes pouring in for Chadwick Boseman. We're going to hear what a colleague had to say about the actor's body of work. 
And Amazon a, going over a big hurdle for, get this, drone deliveries. We'll explain right after the break. Walmart getting ready to offer a new membership program to all shoppers. It's called Walmart Plus. Now, the program is expected to include unlimited free delivery on orders of $35 or more. According to Walmart, customers will have the option of same-day deliveries on more than 160,000 items from groceries to tech and toys. Walmart Plus will also feature a new scan and go option for in-store shopping. It's similar to what's being offered at Sam's Club stores. The program is going to uh, launch on September 15th. And speaking of launching, Amazon, Amazon is one step closer to launching its drone delivery service right here in the United States. The FAA giving the company an air carrier certificate that way that you can actually use the drones. It's a must have before the company can start those drone deliveries. With this certificate, Amazon says it's going to begin to test deliver in some areas, but company not disclosing when or where those tests are going to take place. And ironic that we have these two stories back to back because a lot of analysts are saying that Walmart with that new program trying yeah. to compete with Amazon Prime. Yeah, that's what it sounds like to me. Something I'm interested in is fighting it out how, for your dollar. Well, and how are those drones going to compete with weather? And that's a good point. That delay that's delivery. true. Mm. They're going to be having out. to watch Sarah Spivey's weather forecast. Yeah, you hear that, Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> All right, the aquifer is down almost a whole foot over the past 24 hours. And the pond count looks good today. Uh, mold is low, but I, I think with the increase of rain chances over the next few days, we'll probably see mold go up. So we'll keep you tuned about the pollen count, and I'll be right back with a look at those rain chances. Michael B. Jordan, the latest celebrity to honor Chadwick Boseman. Jordan, who starred alongside him in Black Panther, pinned a touching tribute to his late friend. He wrote that Boseman was viewed as a superhero on and off the screen and that he showed him how to be a better, how to be better, honor purpose and create legacy. Hmm. What a great thought. Jordan said he would dedicate living the rest of his life like Boseman lived with grace courage and no regrets. The Venice Film Festival starting tomorrow and it is expected to be the first real life in person film festival since this pandemic started. But organizers still wondering if anyone's actually going to show up to the event. Travel restrictions are still in place for a lot of countries. Face masks and social distancing guidelines do need to be followed there. There will not be a public red carpet and screenings are restricted to just a small number of viewers. Hollywood hurting in all of this. Yeah. We, on the other hand, are looking forward to a little bit of rain from our Sarah Spivey. At least the chance for some rain, which is really nice to yeah. see on the forecast. And the better chances will be late tonight, guys. But a chance for rain is still there. And in fact, some people got some sprinkles and some light rain early this morning. But now as we head into the afternoon, we're starting to see some peaks of sunshine and it's really just going to be hot for the rest of the afternoon. 85 degrees outside right now. But this is what's killer. Look at that dew point, 78 degree dew point. That is miserable. Every now and then around San Antonio, you'll see a dew point of 80, but they usually happen in the morning. A dew point of 78, that's what's making it feel like 97 degrees outside, even though the thermometer is reading in the mid 80s. So thank goodness for those morning clouds that were a bit stubborn or else we'd be in a pretty difficult picture right now. Uh, now outside we are still seeing some rain on the radar. Most of it is east of San Antonio. There's some light showers out near San Marcos, out near Hallettsville and out near Gonzales. But here in San Antonio, we've seen that light rain come to an end from this morning. And, and now what we're looking at is some holes in this cloud deck. You can see a little bit of sunshine on the west side of Bear County and on the south side of Bear <laughs> County. Uh, this cloud deck is going to slowly erode. We'll have mostly cloudy skies in the afternoon, but still plenty of sunshine and temperature is going to shoot up. Uh, notice that for areas that have seen more sun like Gonzales, it's it's 94 degrees outside. It's 97 in Beeville, 91 in Catula, 91 in Del Rio, but a little bit more comfortable up in Kerrville, 82 degrees. Like I said, these dew points are absolutely miserable. 
Dew points are in the upper 70s for most of us, and that's why it feels like it's 97 in San Antonio. feels like it's 101 in New Braunfels, 108 in Gonzales, 102 in Pleasanton, and 103 in Catula. It's only going to get worse throughout the afternoon. Temperatures should climb around San Antonio into the upper 90s. A heat index will be close to about 108. Uh, and you may run into a couple more sprinkles here as we round out the hour, but still, it'll be mostly cloudy, but with plenty of sunshine and hot. Then in the evening, we'll still have those clouds and actually later in the evening storms are going to develop around the hill country uh, that will hopefully bring some rain to San Antonio. But for the remainder of the day today, because it's going to be so hot, uh, it is a CPS energy peak energy demand day. Lower your use between 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. You'll help uh, save a little uh, extra work on our power grid and you also save some money because you'll be wanting to blast that AC. But if you don't, it's going to be better for you in the long run. Now, a look out at Dallas, Fort Worth in Oklahoma, the Texarkana area. You can clearly see a complex of thunderstorms along a trough of low pressure. And the, this complex of thunderstorms is going to fire off more thunderstorms a little bit further to uh, parts of central Texas outflow boundaries from that rain cooled air. And that's what we're going to be looking for as we head into the rest of the day and into the evening. We'll be looking for that development because if it pans out, if this uh, computer model pans out, what we'll be looking at is thunderstorms around the hill country uh, close to about 10 p.m. to midnight. And then we'll hope that some of those hang on and make it to San Antonio. But the chance for rain around San Antonio tonight is about 60 percent. So it is going to be scattered. Some people will miss out, but those that do get rain will probably get some lightning, gusty winds and healthy downpours in some places. Uh, and this will also likely carry on somewhat into the early morning hours of tomorrow, keeping clouds and lingering rain in the forecast for the first part of Wednesday. That'll have a profound effect on our afternoon temperatures as well. We'll likely be seeing highs in the low to mid 90s around San Antonio tomorrow with another chance for some pop up storms there. And then one once again, Wednesday night into Thursday, we'll have another shot at some scattered showers and storms. If you don't get the rain tonight, don't worry, because every day in the seven day forecast, we have got a chance for pop up showers and storms, especially through the weekend. Notice that temperatures are going to be a little bit more bearable than they have been over the last few days. Afternoon highs should be in the mid 90s. Thank you so much, Sarah. We want to go on to some late breaking news coming off of one of our top stories today. The attorney for Matthias Ometu now saying all charges against his client have been dropped. Ometu was facing felony charges of assaulting a police officer after he was wrongfully arrested while jogging back on August 27th. This announcement comes about an hour after SAPD released body cam footage of the arrest. We are still going through nearly two hours of that body cam footage. We're going to have a full update on the news at five. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Last year, the Jefferson cross country team posted arguably the best season in its entire program's history, taking home both girls and boys district titles. And with the majority of both squads returning for this 2020 season, there is a lot of potential for something even bigger. Of course, that's provided that they have a season at all during this pandemic. KSAT Sports' Andrew Seeley has more. Okay, across, nobody's going to worry about us because we have that space. We can run a whole bunch of kids together at one time and actually still have space. But once they started shutting everything down and cross was on the list, our hearts were so broken. Consistency in repetitions is one of the most important concepts for cross country runners. And this summer was anything but consistent. It's been a roller coaster because we were allowed to see them. Then we weren't allowed to see them, and then we had camp, so we got to see them again. And they're starting to figure out how to make it work on their own. Of course, learning how to train on their own is one of the biggest challenges these runners face. And the Mustangs have seen some mixed results so far. Some athletes have actually progressed drastically by having this time to work on their running, their fitness, their nutrition, and others just need that social interaction so much that they've fallen back. I hope they kind of are learning how to become a runner like on their own and make adjustments on their own. So then when they get with us, then it's easier for us to come together and make the adjustment and for them to kind of see it easier. They have that aha moment faster. 
meets themselves will also look different, specifically in size. No more than eight teams may participate in a single meet, and only one level of competitors, varsity or JV, can be on site at a given time. Regardless of how it looks, the Mustangs just want meets to happen. We really just want to run. It really doesn't matter to us. We want to be able to compete. They've worked so hard. This senior group is the strongest senior group I've had coaching. And, and for them, if we don't have a season, I, that would be so heartbreaking because they put so much work in. We just want them to have a season. Wow. Well, good luck for this 2020 season. Absolutely. All right. Well, things are getting real crafty on SA Live today. Don't they always? Some of the crafts are going to help kids deal with stress during the school year. Yes, indeed. So, of course, today on SA Live, mm -hmm. we are having fun while getting organized for the new school year. How you can design your own family calendar keeps you all in line and everything with board and brush. Yes. And if the school year stress, there it is. That's the calendar we're going to show you how to make. And if the school year stress is being felt at home, Home, these crafts can help your kids unwind and flex their creative minds because you know with everything with virtual learning sometimes they might get frustrated sometimes they might get stressed so this will kind of help help them kind of keep a little more calm let their brains kind of run free for a minute hey mix some healthy greens into your kids diet without them making a fuss really and make home feel a little more like school what parents can do to turn the kids space into a classroom. Okay, a mm -hmm. lot of virtual learning at home. What is the craziest thing your child has said in a virtual classroom? <laughs> and I guess it raises the question, why are you spying it? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> this is where kids say the darndest thing, so you might get a few laughs when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.